Hi, I'm Bob, and welcome to Between the Sheets, where we look at Microsoft Excel and related technologies. Excel and Google Sheets have several hundred functions that work the same in both programs, and they both introduce new ones every so often. But there are a few functions Excel has that Google doesn't, and Google has a few functions that Excel doesn't. And I want to show you one of those, Google's Query function. It has some similarities to Excel's filter and sort functions, but it kicks it up several notches. If you've ever seen SQL, Structured Query Language, some of the function syntax might be familiar. So let's take a look and see how it works. Okay, what we have here is a list of customer orders. And you can see we have typical fields, order number, name, variety, pounds, sale, and so on. And we're going to use the query function to go and slice and dice it. Before we do any of that, let's take a look at the syntax. So the syntax is, we say, equals query, open the parenthesis, and there's three arguments. The first is the range, and that's all the data that you saw. The second argument, that's where all the power is, the clause is all kinds of different options we can use, and I'll show you some detail in a moment. And the third argument is how many rows of headers do we have? By default, it's going to assume that we have just a single row of headers, so that's what I'm going to leave. So what's the story with the clause? The clause is all of these options here. So we can say select this data, where this is true or that's true. Um, we can put a label on it. We can format all these different things. Yeah, it could get a little complicated. Uh, you see uh, down there on the slide, uh, you have the uh, link to where all this documentation is. You shouldn't have to type it in. Uh, you should be able to just click a link here in this podcast and get to it directly. Two very important things that you need to know about these clauses. The first is the entire clause must be between double quotation marks. And the second important thing to know is all of these clauses, all of these keywords have to be in order. So if you're going to use, let's say, select and where and label, you have to do select first and then where and then label. And there are a few other things. Uh, a lot of things are, a lot of the uh, items are uh, case sensitive and there's not a lot of, and you don't use commas in between each clause. But don't worry about that now. We're going to see that when we go and put that stuff in. So let's go back to the worksheet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a new sheet and I'm going to take the headers on row five and copy and paste them in there. So let's go and hit this add sheet button. So we have a brand new sheet and I'm just going to double click the tab. I'm going to call this queries. Let's go back to the orders sheet and I'm going to select across row five, copy to the clipboard, go in there, click on row five and paste. So we've got our headers, and I'm going to put the query function right there uh, in uh, row six. So let's decide what we're going to do first. Let's go to the orders tab, and let's take a look at pounds, for example. You can see we've got all different uh, num numbers, amounts of pounds sold. And what I want to do to start is just find all of the orders where the number of pounds are 10 or greater. And the pounds are in column H, and that's kind of important. So let's go back, type in equals query. You don't even have to type the whole thing in because it's there. You could just click it. It puts in the parenthesis there. So remember, the first argument is where do we have all the data? So let's go back to orders. Might need to scroll a little bit because this thing gets in the way. And I'm going to start at that very first cell of data, shift click to that last cell of data, and then if you're in Windows, control shift down arrow or on the Mac, command shift down arrow so we can have all of those selected and you can see it's a6 through j204 that's great and now comma now we use the clause so i'm going to open up double quotation marks and i'm going to say select asterisk and i'm sure you know an asterisk stands for everything but everything what what, what all are we selecting this is which columns do we want so we're starting off by selecting all of the columns. Later on, I'll show you how you can select just two columns. But you know, first things first. So I'm going to say select star where, and remember we want pounds that are 10 or greater. So pounds are in column H. 
So I'm going to put in capital H, as I said, this is case sensitive, is greater than or equal to 10. Close the double quotes, close the parenthesis, press enter. And there we are. And we've got all the different states, all the different varieties, but the pounds for all of these are 10 or higher. Now this is kind of like the spill functions in Excel, if you're familiar with that. Uh, what that means is the function I put in the very first cell, and you can see that there, if I click any of the other cells in this sheet, you see just the value is there, just the value. The formula itself is only in that very first cell. Also, I went through all the trouble of going to that worksheet and selecting all those cells. To make it a little easier later on, I'm going to create a range name so we could refer to that entire sheet by a friendly name. We're not there yet, but we will do that later. So let's change this around a little bit. Let's say now we don't care about how many pounds. We want to find just the orders where the variety is Blue Mountain. So I'm going to go and edit this. I'm going to remove where it says H is greater than whatever. And I'm looking at the variety, which is in column F. So I'm going to use capital F. So I'm going to say where that equals. And now I use single quotation marks. And this is also case sensitive blue mountain. So I close the single quotation mark. And again, the whole thing there is in double quotes, press enter. And now we've got all blue mountain. That's the only variety we see. And because we removed the pounds requirement, it's high numbers and low numbers as well. Now, what if we want to order this by state abbreviation? Because right now the states are all mixed in. So I'm going to go into the clause. So I'm going to click again right before that double quotation mark. And I want to order this by column D in ascending order. So I'm going to say order by D A S C. Order by column D in ascending order. Press enter. It's still Blue Mountain, still all different number of pounds, and now you can see state abbreviation is all in alphabetical order. Also note that there's no commas here. So I had that F equals Blue Mountain order by, there's no comma after that Blue Mountain. Now we could add multiple criteria. So let's say we want to stay in Blue Mountain, but kind of like before, we want Blue Mountain where the number of pounds sold is 10 or greater. So I'm going to click after we close that single quotation mark. I'm going to say, and H is greater than or equal to 10. So we did that before by itself. Now enter it. And now it's still Blue Mountain, but only where the pounds are 10 or greater. And we are still sorted alphabetical by state. OK, I think you get the idea at this point. So let's do something a little different. Uh, I want to extract only two columns. I want to find last name and number of pounds. Also, I said before that it might be a little easier if we give a friendly range name to that sheet. So let's go and do that first. I'll go back to orders. And right now I'm clicked on that column header and that's fine. Or you could click somewhere in there. It doesn't matter. And press either control A in Windows or command A on the Mac so that you have the entire data area selected. And this here is called the name box. You can see it pops up. And I'm going to click in it, delete whatever's in there, and I'm going to call this sales and enter. So that is now a friendly name for this data. And don't get the name of this range confused with the name of the sheet because the sheet is called orders. You could potentially have several uh, named ranges here. And you could prove to yourself that it works. If you click this down arrow and there are sales and click it and it's all highlighted. If you need to modify it or delete it or whatever, go up to the data menu and over here choose named ranges. And now you can see there are sales. There's what it refers to. If you need to modify it, you could click that little pencil, change the name, change whatever, delete it if you don't want it. I'm just going to cancel out of here and close this pane. Just want you to see what that is. And now we could use that as a name. So let's go and insert a third worksheet. So I'll click that plus again, and I'll double click that, and I'm going to call this pounds. And let's start in row five, kind of like what we did before. 
So I'm going to say equals query, and now I can use that range name. Right, that range name is called sales. And if you have a long range name, you don't even have to type it in because Sheet says, oh yeah, it's called sales, and you could just click that and insert that into the formula, comma, and now I want just two columns. Remember before we said select star? Now I want to say, and remember in double quotation marks, I'm going to say select C, comma, H. So there we do put in a comma because we want column C and column H, and close the quotation marks, close the parenthesis, enter, and now you can see we've got the last name in pounds. And let's say, let's use one more uh, option in the clause. Let's say I want to rename this. Instead of pounds, I want this to be pounds sold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click before that closing quotation marks there, and I'm going to edit it, and I'm going to use the label option. I'm going to say label column H, and there's no equal sign here. <laughs> this is not very consistent. Open up a single quotation mark, and I'm going to call it pounds sold. Close that single quotation mark. So we have select column C, column H. The label of H is pound sold, no equal sign there. We have that closed before we close the double quotation mark. Press enter, and now we've changed that label to pound sold. So you can see how useful the query function is in Google Sheets. It can be a little finicky. It could be a little inconsistent. So if it throws an error instead of the results you expect, don't worry, you can always edit the formula and you can play around with it as much as you need. Uh, and I think you're going to like it. I think you'll find it very uh, useful. So until next time, I am Bob and this has been Between the Sheets. <laughs>